we're starting part two of my interview with the Kendrick brothers with Philip Telfer. And I'm just going to pray over this. Philip is the founder of Christian Worldview Film Festival, which is what the Kendrick brothers are going to talk about in this interview. And so I'm just going to pray over this, uh, this interview. Lord, we pray that you would lead and guide my questions and Philip's answers. And uh, may you be glorified, Father. I want to thank you for all that you've been doing through this film festival over the years. And as we look at how it founded, how it, how it came to be, Lord God, uh, may our ears perk up to all of the prayer that went over that and how important prayer is uh, for the things that you're calling us to do. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in 2005, you started Media Talk 101. That's right. So talk a little bit about what went into that, what your thinking was, what your goals were. Sure. Well, when I was 17 years old, I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'd grown up in a Christian home, but uh, that didn't make me a Christian any more than as uh, I think it was Keith Green who yeah. said, going, going to McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. So um, that was, so I had a life-changing encounter with the Lord. And one of the things that God began to teach me as a 17-year-old disciple of Jesus was that I had previously made a lot of poor choices when it came to the movies I watched, the music I listened to, the games I played. And uh, I didn't have many peers or even adults in my life who were steering me in a better direction, but the Holy Spirit was. Mm -hmm. And so I, I began to grow in some convictions. And so I went on a two-week media fast as a 17-year-old unheard of. Nobody ever <laughs> nobody ever suggested it other than the Holy Spirit. I did that with some of my students and I thought they were going to kill me. Yes. So uh, <laughs> people thought I was a little bit taking a little bit too far. But during those two weeks, one of the things that really um, was just amazing is that my, my thinking began to clear. It's kind of like light pollution, you know, when you're in a big city and you look up at night, you don't see the stars because there's so much man-made light. And my heart and my mind had been so flooded with a lot of secular media and messages that were against the Lord and just taking that break for a couple of weeks my my thinking began to be renewed I began to see God more clearly and I felt free more free than I had ever imagined and I realized you know this had a real hold on me and I'm so glad to kind of the to break that hold and the Lord broke that hold and I didn't really become someone who spoke about that. I just enjoyed the personal benefits of it. It seemed like many Christians were too uh, touchy about the subject. Mm -hmm. So I just lived quietly and, and... Our idols are hard to let go. Yes. So it wasn't until I was a youth pastor in the late uh, 90s and working with youth full time that I began to see, boy, this problem hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. It's only getting worse. And so I began just in my local youth group to try to find ways to communicate with young people the importance of discernment and gaining in biblical wisdom and knowledge. And fast forward, eventually that led to 2005 beginning a nonprofit organization, Media Talk 101, with that purpose of teaching media discernment in the light of following Christ. So that's uh, that's kind of a longer answer to a short question, but no, but it, I I love it. I'm glad you went back a little further. So now you're you're doing Media Talk 101, mm -hmm. and you found yourself at the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival. Yes, and you were inspired to do a documentary. Tell, talk about how that inspiration came to be. Yeah, well, I actually did hear at that event uh, Stephen Kendrick speak, okay. and uh, and he was inspiring. And one of the things he gave an illustration that caught my attention because he, he, he said this, imagine if you were a, a speaker who had a message you wanted to communicate. And I'm like, well, that's in my mind. I'm going, well, that's who I am. That's what I do. And he says, what if you were traveling around the country? I'm like, well, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and then uh, where, the, where it kind of broke down, he says, what if you were speaking to a, a unique audience every Sunday of, of a thousand people? That I was not doing. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was traveling around speaking, but rarely in a almost never would get a thousand people to hear what I was having to say. So he was like, but if you, if you had a thousand unique people who heard you every Sunday for every Sunday of the year, mm -hmm. and then you took your message, you did that year in and year out for a hundred years, wow. 
how many people he asked how many if we'll get 50 sundays he kind of rounded it off let's just do 50 sundays out of the year a thousand unique people every Mm -hmm. every sunday Mm -hmm. and you do that for 100 years how many people would you have reached and he gave us the answer the answer is five million and that's a big number yeah but he says we have reached uh five million people in a few months through our movie fireproof (laughs) our one message (laughs) and then i'm like so now he had my attention yeah and i'm like okay uh, I'm listening, yeah. and but I I wasn't thinking of feature films, but I did get a chance to talk with Stephen in the hallway, uh, shared a little bit about what I was doing, and he was the first one to really encourage me to consider documentary filmmaking. Wow! He said, you know, Philip, your your subject would make a great documentary, and at the time I'm looking behind me going, who are you talking to? <laughs> you talking like, I'm like, I'm surrounded by all these aspiring filmmakers, that's not me, but... Um, but that was that did get the wheels turning, and I began to think, well, maybe I can connect with some aspiring young filmmaker, and I can cast my vision yeah. for what God is stirring in my heart. And that that didn't happen. You know, I was waiting mm-hmm. for somebody else to catch the vision yeah. when God had given me the vision uh, with the message that that He had entrusted to me. And mm-hmm. then, uh, so every year I'd kind of go back to that event. And then in 2000. I believe it was, I met a man named Curtis Bowers. Curtis Bowers made a documentary called Agenda. Yes. And when I, uh, I sat in a screening room watching that documentary, his first documentary, and then also realizing his story, he had never made a documentary before. Oh. And he had been sitting in some classes the year before just like I had, but he took it a step further and he says, I'm actually going to go out and make a documentary, though I've never made one before. And it impacted me, you know, watching that. And so two things happened while I was in that screening of that documentary. One was I'm learning things and this is inspiring, but also I pulled out my notebook and uh, a pen and I began, I had resolve. I says, I am going to make a documentary uh, next year. I'm going to, you know, by God's grace, I'm determined now that this is, I have no excuses. Curtis Bowers just made a documentary. (laughs) He never made one before. And he just made a beautiful documentary that was so informative. And so the Lord just uh, put a resolve in my heart. And, uh, I began just praying and asking the Lord to help. I didn't know where to start. Mm. Shortly after that, uh, I was speaking with a supporter of our ministry and they were asking what's what's new and i was like well i'm going to make a documentary and i began to ex- to describe what i was going to do and i was like well philip that sounds like a pretty expensive project how are you going to fund that and i said well i really don't know but it, you know i'm just going to keep i'm just going to keep moving forward believing that god's going to do it well they caught the vision and they said you know what uh, I'm going to write you a check. <laughs> they wrote me a big, a, a pretty big check Praise God. to help seed the project and help us get started. And so that, that process of making a documentary all of 2011, the documentary is called Captivated, Finding Freedom in a Media Captive Culture. And we, um, you know, it put me in the path of even more filmmakers as we hired crew. And then after the, the movie was done, then submitting it to film festivals and there's it's the, the Christian film festival circuit's not a big one, yeah. but um, it's growing. It's growing, and so I was uh, getting the documentary into film festivals, interacting with more, and my heart began to really be knit together with oh, this group of creatives yeah. through this process. I yeah. be it's a it's a demographic of people that God just gave me a heart for. And so by 2013, uh, the summer of 2013, I uh, spoke with my, one of my partners in ministry, Rhett Simpkins, and we, were, we came into the office and I said, you know, in prayer, God has just put something on my heart. Uh, I have this, just have this growing desire to pour into filmmakers. Mm. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I believe it's from the Lord. Mm. And so let's commit this to prayer. And so we just began in the summer of 2013 to pray and say, God, we don't, it wasn't in our mind. It wasn't a film festival. It wasn't anything. It was just, we know that there's this demographic of believers and, and, um, they have their struggles and they have their victories and they have their defeats, but, uh, I'm aware of them and God has given me a heart for them. So God, we're just going to commit that to you and you lead, 
oh. where you would like to lead. So it began with prayer. Awesome. Fantastic. Now, I remember you telling me part of the story was that it was starting to look like a film festival, but uh, there's one down the road. Well, what happened was there was a film festival at the time. And uh, what and in 2013, later on in the fall of 2013, that film festival came to an abrupt end unexpectedly. And when that happened, um, immediately my heart is uh, really felt the loss of a film festival that came to an end, yeah. but also felt the loss of the community mm. where this was something they were anticipating, they were hoping for, people were making films, anticipating deadlines. And my heart went out and I, and I began to uh, inquire uh, from other ministries, is anybody going to try to do something uh, mm -hmm. to minister to these filmmakers. They're discouraged. Mm -hmm. They're let down. Yeah. Um, I, was on the f I was on a film set when the announcement was made, and there was just like was a, a... communal gasp of, you know, yes. it just knocked the wind out of a lot of yes. people. Yeah. And I felt that because that was... that I had gained a lot of friends, and that was a lot of my growing peer group. So we all felt it. Yeah. And so I had reached out to some ministries that were larger, had better budgets, <laughs> more experience, more capable to say is, I, you know, what do you think about, you know, would you, would you think about trying something just for a year, just to, to, as a stopgap and yeah. I'll come alongside and help. And nobody really had a heart wow. for it. And same thing. It was just like the documentary. I was kind of, I, mean, looking, I was seeing a pattern here. <laughs> pattern. I'm like, always like, like a, look, you know, looking for somebody else to carry the, the vision. And, and I realized, you know, this is something God's birthing in my heart. So we, through prayer and uh, seeking the Lord and getting wise counsel, uh, felt led to begin the Christian World Film Festival. So that was in the fall of 2013. And our hope was to uh, put together an event that would be in a general time frame that the other one would have been mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. But that left us with about four months oh. <laughs> wow. to, to go from zero to 60 with no experience. Uh, but a whole lot of notes. Yes. God had been giving you the vision. Yes, he had been giving me the vision. Another thing that had happened, which is also uh, part of the story, you may not know this part, but uh, at the time I, was, I had a transition. We were moving to San Antonio. We had lived there before. We were gone for a couple of years to make the documentary, to promote it, to market it. And uh, I had been invited by a church to come back to San Antonio that asked me to pastor this church, and the timing was right. So we were just landing in San Antonio when all this began to unfold. Wow. And that something else had happened that summer. Knowing I was coming back to San Antonio, there was a organization that I used to speak uh, at their events. It was called Iron Sharpens Iron. It's a men's mm -hmm. conference run by Brian Doyle. And I enjoyed going to his one-day equipping conferences. He used to work with Promise Keepers oh. uh, back in its heyday. And then when Promise Keepers kind of waned, he continued doing men's ministry. He just reimagined what a men's conference could look like if you did it local, at a church, smaller events. And then he was he really wanted to not just have everybody doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. He had this idea of let's do breakouts, let's do topical things that, that resonate with different men depending on where they're at. So wow. so I would attend these and I would I would be like a workshop speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talking about media and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I loved everything that they were doing in their conference. So I began to talk with Brian. I said, you know, there's no Iron Sharpens Iron men's conferences in San Antonio. What would it take to uh, see one come to our area? He said, well, Philip, why don't you come and learn how we run our events? Wow. And, and so, so I took a whole week of training oh, wow. that summer with Brian. Which Doyle. summer was this? This was 2013. Oh, wow. <laughs> 2013, wow. I'm going and I'm getting training from a veteran. But this happens before. It, be, before I even know that we're going to start a film festival. Wow. So I'm, I'm getting training. And, and uh, to, to make a longer story short, it wasn't going to work for me uh, to begin an Iron Sharpens Iron. And I was a little discouraged because I thought, I just got this training. I love <laughs> It's, it's like, well, what am I going to use it for? Like, that's kind of a waste of a week, you know? Because now, now I've got all, these, all the goods, you know? Like, and so when, um, when we began to imagine what 
uh, the Lord might be calling us to do, I had this vision for the Filmmakers Guild, which was essentially an iron sharpens iron for filmmakers. Wow. And I told Brian, I said, you know what, Brian, I, I know it's not going to work for me to do the iron sharpens iron, but I hope you don't mind. I'm going to use everything I learned and I'm going to apply it to filmmakers. We're just going to replicate it for about three days. Mm. <laughs> and so, so really our, um, our Filmmakers Guild is modeled after an Iron Sharpens Iron wow. men's conference, okay. Alm almost to a T. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And Philip, um, Stephen Kendrick spoke that very first year, right? No, he was not able to. What? I thought, it, I thought for sure I remembered him being no, there. No, uh, they sent us a video, a welcome That's video. That's what it was. Okay. They were busy with uh, making films, and he, oh, okay. he did call me in uh, 2014 after our first event. He said, we knew each other uh, enough to be able to have each other's phone numbers. And he, he called and he said, Philip, um, I heard a lot of good things, a good, good um, feedback from people who were there. I just want to encourage you. Uh, we're with you. But uh, we couldn't make it this year. And they were making War Room at the time. We're getting ready to do War Room. They said, we, we won't be able to be with you next year either. But count on us <laughs> in 2016. And so it wasn't until 2016 that they were able to actually come and attend the event for the first time. It was our third year. They must have been a, there must have been a video year two as well, because I have a strong... It might have been. It might have, have been. a strong recollection of them being there all three years in some yes. form. Yes. No, no. They, wow. they, they weren't there in person until yeah. 2016. Wow. Well, they sure made a big impact on me. Just a, a real blessing. Yes. And, and so they told me, you'll see this in the interview a little later, they said right from the start, you were like, hey... Alex, Stephen, why don't you host this? Yes. Well, that did back uh, even before I imagined doing a film festival. I had uh, wondered, why aren't the Kendricks doing something <laughs> in Albany? And uh, so I used to think that if anybody really should be doing this, it should be them. And now here we are. And here we are in Albany. It really is full circle. I didn't say that in the intro, but we are sitting in one of their mini studios here at Sherwood Baptist. They were kind enough to let us sneak in. So any, anything else you would want to say about your work with the Kendricks? Well, I will say that they have always been um, great examples of the importance of prayer. And not only on set, but in their personal lives as well. Of course, we see this in War Room. That's the most remarkable film in my opinion, the fact that you would make a film about a little old lady who prays in a closet. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody that would green light a project like that. And, and Sony Studios. Yeah, and yet um, I think that was one of their biggest box office successes, and it just shows... They were number one Labor Day weekend, number one at the box office. So prayer is vital. Yeah. And so in our in with the Christian Worldview Film Festival, that's something we have made as... Um, it's just a foundation. So we, our team meets on a weekly basis to pray. We, every, every week, every Thursday, it has been this last year, every Thursday we're meeting for a half hour. Wow. We go through one of our core values. We pray and uh, seek the Lord and ask for his, his help. Talk about those core values. Talk about some of your favorites. Yeah, well, one of the things that's important is to, when you're talking about any kind of movement, is, to, if, is for people to know, is this something I want to be a part of? or not mm -hmm. and so when if you don't define that then it can become all sorts of things and people can have their own ideas where they want to steer so it's very important to have some core values and uh, number one our number one core value is Jesus Christ is preeminent that mm -hmm. comes from Colossians mm -hmm. and Colossians chapter 1 and that just means Jesus is above all things and that is easy to to say kind of in Christianese and to kind of maybe put on bumper stickers or something, but it's another thing to live that out. So we wanted to be bold to just make sure that filmmakers knew this was not a, an industry event. This was not just about uh, stoking the fire of creativity. This wasn't just about helping them get a leg up and all those things happen, yeah. but they don't matter if, if we don't recognize because Jesus is it doesn't say Jesus should be preeminent. Mm -hmm. It says Jesus is preeminent, and whether people recognize that or not does not change the reality. Mm -hmm. He is Lord over heaven and earth. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. So Jesus is preeminent. And so what we want to do is recognize what is true mm -hmm. and uh, align ourselves to Jesus Christ. And that, and that brings us, I'll just talk about the first two, because there's some other ones. Yeah. But the first two are, are to me, build 
uh, the, the rest of them build on these. Yeah. So Jesus Christ is preeminent. The second one is humility is not optional or, or humility <laughs> is not an option. When you're talking about creatives, yeah. I don't care if it's musicians, you know, musicians yeah. or filmmakers or any kind of artists, that's going to be a struggle. And so that was something I, I've identified and realized, you know what, unless we say it, yeah. it's not going to embed. Yeah. And so being able to, to um, make that a core value to say, you know what, he, Jesus mm -hmm. is, we just, we just acknowledged he's the highest yeah. over all things. Yeah. And yet the Bible says <laughs> he lowered himself to the lowest Amen. to serve us. And how dare we not follow his example because we will never be, can never be, should never be as high as he is high. Uh, we are already low. <laughs> and so to, to, to puff ourselves up is, is really uh, to dishonor him. Yeah. So we honor him by humbling ourselves. And that's something this community really needs to take hold of. So true. So true. And this this film festival is really, I've been to a lot of film festivals. This one is powerfully unique in this focus, focusing always back to Jesus. There are Christian film festivals that do this as well, but, but I feel like what marks this one is it all goes back to the gospel. It all goes back to, to glorifying the Lord. And so I want to thank you for that. And baptisms, we're, we're about to experience some baptisms. Yesterday, Pastor Paul Goddard uh, gave the call, if anyone here hasn't been baptized and wants to be, and, and maybe you're not walking with the Lord, come on in, come on into the kingdom and get baptized today. We're so excited about this. We've never done this before at the Christian World Week Film Festival, so this is kind of amazing and, and an incredible new and fresh way. Uh, basically, we want everyone who's here to feel total freedom to take the next step in their walk with Christ. And uh, we have 12 people tonight that say they want to get baptized. 13, 13. Yes. So there's 13 tonight that want to get baptized. And basically, regardless of whether they were dedicated as a child or they said, uh, I did it when I didn't know what I was doing or I've never been baptized, I want to publicly identify with Christ. And we told them, you know, the water doesn't wash away sin. Jesus uh, does that. But this is a way that just like putting on a wedding ring, you're publicly identifying uh, with the Lord. And so this is Micah. Micah, what is your testimony? I am a sinner who needs a Savior, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based upon your profession of faith, it is my honor to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you go. So, Micah, who w played the, one of the mothers in uh, Like Arrows and Martha in Washington's Armor, just got baptized. Micah, talk about it. Um, God put it on my heart to get baptized actually last year. And, and it, for some reasons out of my control, it didn't happen. And then I kind of kept putting it off and putting it off. And then last night, it was just so clear, like... I have to do this. I have to make this proclamation of faith and this isn't the place I would pick to do it necessarily, but I just had such a piece about it. And I just knew like, I, I want to publicly declare, I've been a Christian my whole life, but publicly declare like, this is who I am and this is why I am who I am. And Christ is the only reason, um, I'll, I'll ever make it into heaven. I'm so grateful for him. And that's all that matters is, is eternal life with him. Praise God. And to do it here with <laughs> Stephen Kendrick. I mean, come on. It's God's <laughs> cool like that. I didn't plan it, but it's pretty cool because they've, you know, been a huge influence in my spiritual walk and, um, getting oh. to be part of their films and then be part of this is, is crazy. It's amazing. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Last year we had a, you know, we had another unique talking about prayer. We had a, a, a guest, and he was uh, one of our keynote speakers, Tim Mahoney, oh, yes. who uh, produce, uh, produces the documentaries Patterns of Evidence. Yeah. It was his first time speaking. He shared his testimony. Wow. But beforehand, he asked me, he says, Philip, I've, my wife and I have had a ministry over the years of, of laying hands on filmmakers and just praying God's blessing in their life. Many of them 
have not received a blessing from their church or their family for what they're doing. And so we've done this for years. What do you think of, (laughs) after I talk, making an invitation for anybody that would like to have a prayer of blessing upon them? Mm. And I said, I think that's wonderful. There is going to be a screening in this room, (laughs) so we're gonna have to find another room. And I don't know what kind of response we'll have. We had over 50 filmmakers. And, and Tim did not just want to like line them all up and say, oh, God bless you all. Yeah. He prayed for each individual, listened to their hearts, and that prayer meeting went for four hours. <laughs> Praise God. That's revival. And in the, in the tears, we almost had to call the janitor in <laughs> to put out at least a cone to, because there's so many tears on the, on the floor. I and, bet. And, and uh, in fact, the church had the, that we were using, they uh, had to lock the doors at midnight. We were not done. We're not, there were still people waiting to be blessed and to be prayed for. So, so we just said, well, we can move it out to the parking lot. So if you still want to be, and, they, and those that were waiting said, we'll wait. So we all, we moved out to the parking lot and continued to pray till about 12.30 a.m. <laughs> Well, awesome. That's awesome. And now we're going to transition to the Kendricks. Anything you want to say about them before they come on? Yeah, well, I, I would just say that uh, they're the real deal. And I know them uh, both in the public light as well as in the private space. And um, I'm just grateful that they are, they are humble men that are allowing God to use them with what he has entrusted to them. Perfect. Here are Stephen and Alex Kendrick. Tell me now about Christian Worldview Film Festival. You guys have been a part of this for so long. And is this the first year it's coming to your church in Albany? That's exactly right. August 1st through the 5th, the Christian Worldview Film Festival will be in Albany. Uh, We do training for three days with people that are passionate about Christian film. And we have everything from new beginning introduction to film classes. There's the acting, which you're going to be a part of. Uh, and have been a part of in the past. There's the acting, there's the directing, producing, fundraising, marketing, all those things. We also do in concert with that on parallel tracks, an understanding of Christian worldview of how can we glorify God in the writing process, in the directing process? How can we walk in love towards our crew members? You know, God will call us to do things beyond what a union would require because we're viewing everybody as made in the image of God and we want to take care of our crew. We want to honor their families, their marriages, you know, their kids in the process of making a film. And then we will have the last part of the week, uh, over 50 films of shorts, documentaries, full features that people can come and they can watch before they come out in theaters or before they reach distribution, new projects from amateurs all the way to professional production. So it is a great week and uh, we go to it every year. We speak at it every year and being able to do it in Albany where our film journey began is just, uh, is very meaningful to us. And our plan is to to have our church pray over the, this generation of filmmakers like they prayed over us when we began our journey. Father, we lift up our hearts, our lives to you, the creator of everything and the giver of every good gift. Lord, we acknowledge that you have been gracious and kind to us this week. Lord, we thank you for every speaker, for every session, for every worship song for every conversation in the hallway, for every meal we've had together. And Lord, we thank you for bringing us here safely. A few years ago, we were almost shut down by COVID and we were able to meet, but Lord, we thank you we can take off masks and lift up our hands and worship your name and look at one another in the face and share joy and conversations to one another. And Lord, as we look to the future, we first look to you. You alone know what we need You know what you have planned for us. You know what the nations around the world need. So, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name for your blessings upon our lives. And I pray that for every person in this room, every filmmaker who is listening to this, anyone who supports the kingdom. And, Lord, we ask for your hand of grace and blessing to be upon us. We ask, Lord that you would bless us indeed, that you would expand our borders and coasts, our circumference of influence, that you would keep us from evil, that we may not know the pain of it. Lord, we ask that you would free up our lives of things we don't need to be doing. Lord, that you'd help us to have the discernment to say yes to the things that are of you 
and just say no to the things that, that are not of you. And Lord, we ask that we would learn to find our joy and our satisfaction first in you, without having to have anything in this world or help us to receive by the power of your Holy Spirit the love and joy and peace of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would teach us how to walk with you and know you and love you and rely upon you. And Lord, I pray for you to give us inspiration and creativity. You give us the ideas, new fresh ideas for a new generation, new technologies. Lord, would you send the right mentors and supporters and prayer warriors and pastors and friends and encouragers into our lives. Lord, would you, the one with unlimited resources, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord, would you provide the resources that we need for the projects that are ahead that you want us to be a part of? Lord, we ask that you would fill us and lead us with the knowledge of your will, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Give us better ways of doing things, better ways of completing things, more efficient ways of operating. And Lord, I pray that you would connect us with great partners on the journey. It is not good for us to function alone. So Lord, would you send us the right people that we can move forward with in the days ahead. And Lord, we ask for your blessings upon our personal lives, upon our health, upon our marriages, upon our children, upon our business partners, upon our friendships in the days ahead. We ask for your blessings and your favor to be upon us. And Lord, we pray against evil and temptation that you would deliver us. And Lord, that you would lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine in our lives and for your glory. And we ask you to do that, Lord. Lord, send us the people you want us to pour into and mentor and love on and protect and guide and lead. And I pray we would be able to rejoice in their success just as much. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you and we thank you. You are God and you are over everything. Lord, you are not our employee. We are your servants. We are your children. God, I remember being right here when the body of Christ prayed over us before we made face of giants and fireproof and courageous. And Lord, how they sent us out into the war room uh, praying over us, God. And so, Lord, please, uh, we ask you, I pray for every person who's come here and is kneeling here, God. I ask you to go through their hearts that you would um, cleanse, that you would point out anything that you want them to surrender to you, uh, Lord, that you would help them to see their heart the way you see it, and Lord, that they would say, God, I am yours, my heart is yours, my movies and projects and TV shows are yours, my future is yours, my eternity is yours, and Lord, may we honor you as our Savior and as our God, and there is no other, you are the Lord, and we thank you for salvation. God, we ask you to forgive us when we have not wholeheartedly devoted ourselves to you. So help us renew that right now, Lord. Help us renew that we are wholeheartedly followers of Jesus Christ. And may your name be lifted high. May your name be praised and worshipped. And people would see what's going on in the body of Christ. Those who are honoring you, God, would you bless them, bless them, bless them, Lord. Guide them, guard them, protect them, and bless them. Lord, we ask that you would teach us, you would help our hearts be moldable and tender to the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit guide what we do. So, Lord, thank you for who you are. May you get the glory. And so, Lord, as we pray, we dedicate our projects to you, our future to you, our, our even our manner to you. May you receive all the glory. And thank you for what you've already done here. Glorify yourself, Lord. Pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can go to ChristianWorldviewFilmFestival.com for tickets to find out how you can show up and be a part of that. And we would encourage people to drive in, fly in from across the nation. It's worth it every year to be at this event. It's fantastic. And whose idea was that to bring it to your church? Uh, it actually happened with a lot of prayer. Yeah. You know, we, we've done it in San Antonio, Texas. We've done it in Nashville. 
Uh, Philip Telfer said all along, why aren't they doing this in Albany at Sherwood where their journey began? But this year, it's like everything fell into place. The door opened at our church. And uh, actually, our new pastor will be speaking as, as one of the keynotes. He's an excellent communicator, and which is going to be add a cool dynamic to what's going to happen during the week. But people can also visit where we shot, you know, Face the Giants or Dance with Their Daughter Under the Tree where we shot Courageous. So it'll be a cool experience. That's so fantastic. Your films have literally impacted the world. So what is talking to your goal about what you hope to see these young filmmakers do? You know, uh, the, we've made uh, seven films, seven or eight. If you add courageous. Well, well Life Mark is number eight, I think. Okay. And so um, each time we invite some young filmmakers to be on our crew, we, we've done as many as about 20. So we would call universities, Christian universities that have film programs or churches or some organization and say, okay, send us your top two or three uh, filmmakers that you truly believe are serious about honoring the Lord with this with, with this craft. So when they when they come, we started doing it around fireproof and, and courageous, and mm -hmm. continued with war room and overcomer. And so many of these have gone on and are making films. And so we're grateful for that because we want to instill in them when you honor God back with the skill set He's allowed mm -hmm. you to develop, and His hand is on it. You will see more fruit than you could have ever born on your own. And mm -hmm. so we love doing that. So we've, we've been investing in this next generation. And then the Christian Worldview Film Festival is another platform that we're honored to be a part of to stand up and speak to 500 young filmmakers and to invest in them as well. So we're excited about it. It's important to us to continue passing the torch. You know, we've been doing this for almost two decades now, and we want to continue, but we need more young people saying, I want to honor the Lord, not just to get an award, not just to, to get to some status, but to truly honor the Lord. Telling stories through movies is a powerful medium. Mm -hmm. So if you think about this, many people even watching this interview now won't remember the sermon they heard at their own church one month ago. They won't remember that sermon, but they'll remember a motion picture very clearly they saw a decade ago. Yep. Because when you see, when you hear uh, and it, it touches your heart mm -hmm. and it gives you pictures in your mind to remember. So Jesus told parable stories and they remember the stories and the truth from those. And so we're doing the same thing visually through motion pictures. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful and we want to continue impacting as many people as the Lord will allow us to uh, and nations all over the world. But again, we want to reflect a holy, loving God. And so it's not just about us getting to some status. We want to honor the Lord mm -hmm. so that when we look back on our lives at the end of our journey, we can say we have no regrets. May Jesus be glorified. May his truth be shared. And so whoever sees our films, we hope it draws them a step closer to the Lord. Fantastic.